Hey singers, I'm Justin Stoney, the founder of New York Vocal Coaching, back for episode 122 of Voice Lessons to the World. I'm joined again today by one of the world's leading distortion researchers and experts, Nicolas Ormazabal. Welcome back, Nicolas. Muchas gracias, Justin. Thank you very much. Hola todo el mundo. Hi, everyone. I'm Nicolas Ormazabal from Chile. So let's do it. Let's do it. Last time, Nicolas and I walked you through growls. growls. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Today, we're talking about what I personally think is the most important kind of rasp and distortion, the false vocal folds. Nicolas? I agree with you because, yeah, it's the most versatile um, distortion. You can hear it uh, in Bruno Mars singing, you know, I was wrong! It's a really fancy rasp distortion, but you can also hear rasp in, for example, some Carter from Architects. Uh, I always go with the wind! It's the same distortion, but we are using more or less compression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very cool. A few quick disclaimers about rasp and distortion. Distortion should not hurt. They are not loud. The microphone does the work. They are usually much less aggressive and much more subtle than we think. They're not damaging to the voice if done properly. Distortions take time. Be patient with yourself and study with an expert if you can. So, Nicolas, how would you describe false fold distortion? Okay, false fold distortion, it's a melodic distortion and it's really versatile because we can add more readiness or less readiness. We can add more compression at the level of the vocal folds or even at the level of the folds, vocal folds, you know, false folds. So yeah, we have a lot of things we can do with, with rasp, you know. Uh, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things. It's awesome. So let's go ahead and come up with a formal definition. False fold distortion is a sandpapery or ripping quality produced by the false folds vibrating in either periodic, predictable, or aperiodic, unpredictable vibrations during sung pitches. Now let's listen to a few singers using false fold distortion. Hey, hey mama said the way you move gonna make you sweat, gonna make you groove. So how do we learn to do false fold distortions? Let's take a look at three strategies. First, character voices. So some characters yeah. that we can do. Yeah, we can use a buzzer sound, buzzer, ang, ang. <laughs> we can yeah. play as a race car, ang. <laughs> we can use some 
Brown Moore, uh, <laughs> you know, right, James sure. Hetfield from Metallica too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used a lot of distortion, a lot of frost. Yeah, those are all fantastic uh, characters. The the buzzer, the race car, lawnmower. Uh, we don't have any lawns in New York, so we don't know what that means. Uh, and James Hatfield from Metallica. Yeah, yeah. good characters. Next up, Twang. Twang is definitely something we've talked about on this show in the past. Essentially, it's the internal brightening of the voice created at the top of the larynx. You can say normal voice, twangy voice. Nice. Now, twang can really help to get those false folds to rub together because of that narrowing of the larynx. You can try a three-part exercise like this. Normal. Yeah, yeah. Twangy. Yeah, yeah. And then twang plus distortion. Yeah, yeah. Huh, we're listening for that sandpaper ripping subtle quality. That's normal. Yeah, yeah. Twangy. Yeah, yeah. And then twang plus distortion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And third, we have a compression control exercise. So this exercise, how does it go? Yeah, this exercise is compression exercise. Well, we don't have a way to bring uh, false chords together by itself, by themselves, because they don't have any muscle. Mm -hmm. So we can bring the false chords together from above and from below, mm -hmm. yeah. And Justin gave us one, uh, one really good tool to uh, bring the false chords from above, and it's twang. Twang. Twang, yeah. Yeah. But what about be from below? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can bring the false chords together by adding more compressions at the level of true vocal folds. Mm -hmm. The exercise looks like this. It's like taking a pitch and moving from your head voice to your chest voice. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like this. Hey! Gradually I am adding more and more compression. We have to know that this exercise is not too low, you know? Mm. Even if you want to go farther and practicing over compressed rasp like this it's not too loud, and you are here with me. You yeah. can feel it, yeah. Yeah, I'm right next to Nicolas, and it's just like talking. It's not loud at all. And remember, that's one of our disclaimers. All of these distortions are not loud. We let the microphone do the work. But I love that compression exercise, really bringing things together from below. Awesome. Well. Uh, False fold distortion is a vast topic, but I hope that this gave you a nice taste today. Next time, for our next episode, we're gonna be covering... The Growls! <laughs> Death Growls. And if you're a voice teacher looking to train distortions, or if you're a singer looking to master distortions, here's how you can go much deeper. If you'd like to sing with rasp and distortion, visit newyorkvocalcoaching.com slash distortion. If you're a voice teacher wanting to teach rasp and distortion safely to your singers, please visit voiceteachertraining.com slash distortion and become part of our worldwide community. To get your copy of Justin Stoney's book, Sing Like Never Before, visit singlikeneverbefore.com. If you'd like a vocal course that you can do from home, check out the Voice Lessons to the World vocal course. Our 12-part program takes you on a journey from beginner to master level vocal exercises. Find it at voicelessonstotheworld.com. Finally, if you'd like free vocal tips sent to you each day, sign up at dailyvocaltips.com.